do this. That is my office in the back. I miss my Homer, my Homer Simpson. I got a Himalayan um, calendar, a bead calendar here. I got a voodoo doll. I got a New Orleans. Uh, all kinds of stuff. There's some MC Escher stuff over there. There's a snail on my printer to represent how quickly the printer works. So I don't miss that. All right, guys, uh, save me from this. Anybody have questions from homework or, or uh, general questions, technical questions? Hopefully everybody understands how to turn stuff in, right? Everybody understands how to turn homework in. It'd be great to get to the seventh week and say, hey, are, do we have homework that we're supposed to turn in? <laughs> I've actually had that happen before. So let's not let that happen. All right, let me turn my background off. Bam, I'm back in my house. Showing too much of my mess, hold on. There we go. Not too bad. Um, okay. No questions. No questions from anything. You guys are good on the homework. Keep it up. I've only got a couple of chapter threes in, but that's all right. They're not due for a little while. When is our first quiz? February 9th. Yeah. What day is that? Is this Tuesday? Tuesday. I like it. It's on Tuesday. Tuesday, we'll have our first quiz. Um, I made chapter one and chapter two homework due on Sunday, if I remember correctly. So then I have enough time to look at it all if you turn it in on time. So then you have it to look at to help you for the quiz. All right. Any questions about that? You guys good? Okay, I got fewer. Oh yeah, uh, are we gonna do the quiz uh, at the Zoom or no? I think um, we're not, we're not. It's gonna be what you call asynchronous. It will be a timed quiz, but it won't be during class. Yeah, the midterm and the final is gonna be over Zoom with your cameras turned on. Uh, okay. That'll be an exciting day. Uh, <laughs> exciting quiz. Um, anything else guys? Anything technical questions? Any? Who is the person that is, um, are you changing your name right now? Uh, you're currently two lines. Who is that? No. <laughs> Let me see. I'm gonna send you a message. No, Alan, you're Alan, Alan. I can see Alan. There's somebody, it's like the rapper, the little known rapper, two lines. Um, who are you? Bam. Somebody just got a message from me. I would love it if you could change your name. Could everybody just make sure that your name is your name? Or at least some reasonable back, back settlementally. If your name is, is line, line, like underscore, underscore, I want to talk to you for a while. I have a feeling it isn't really. All right, you're just gonna ignore me. Maybe I should put you in the waiting room. That's sort of like a, um, a Twilight Zone episode. I'm gonna put you in the waiting room, see if that wakes you up. Two lines, going once. Let me see if I can see. Oh, they left. <laughs> that was neat. All right, that's intriguing. I'm always, everybody's always a little on edge about Zoom bombing. Has anyone ever experienced a Zoom bombing? No, do you guys know what a Zoom bombing is? Anybody? So uh, for example, one of my colleagues had a Zoom bombing occur. It happened during one of the Senate meetings, which was exciting. So it's just somebody comes in, a group of people just come into the room and they just start showing and sharing horrible pictures and, and yelling horrible things. That's the, okay, sure. You can say that if you want to, unless it really isn't. It's really horrific and it's really disgusting. Uh, they yell racist things, they yell misogynistic things. I'm with you, don't worry, don't worry. I, don't, I know you don't mean it. Um, so yeah, anytime I see somebody questionable, I get a little, like I'm gonna throw you in the, in the Zoom dungeon. All right. 
I do have a Zoom dungeon. Anybody? So real quick, any any questions? Nothing? Nothing? No questions? Okay. All right. We're going to keep going. Um, we basically have finished chapter two. So that homework is due Sunday. So turn it in earlier, the better. And a lot of people have already turned it in. I've graded it already. If you've turned it in, it, I should have graded all of them, I think. Uh, a few people have turned in chapter three homework. I haven't graded that yet. I think you just turn it in today. So um, I can give myself a little break. Um, we are going to get into chapter three. And this is where we kind of pump the brakes a little bit. So if you're a little worried about the way the class has been going, chapter one and chapter two are review sections. That's why I don't go section by section. It's, it's stuff you're supposed to come in knowing. Uh, chapter three is also sort of stuff you're supposed to come in knowing, but we sort of slow it down in chapter three. I'm going to go section by section now. It's going to be a little more um, formal. Uh, let me see who just came. Now I'm a little on edge about everybody. Okay. Everybody looks good. Okay. Um, so, okay. If there's no questions, we are going to, let me see, how do I want to do this? Sure. All right. That stuff flying all over the place. Hold on. That's a little too close, Jeff. So, guys, if I say function, what does that mean to anybody? Does anybody else think conjunction, junction, what's your function? No. What does function mean mathematically? Anybody? Do you guys know? The input corresponds to only one output. I like it. I like it. Kyle, you're, you're right too. But now let's go more math. More math. Uh, so, all right. So throw me some words that go along with function. Input output, right? Those go along with function, I like it. So these are some words that go along. Anything else you guys know about functions? A relation. I like it, it's a type of relation. Logical line. Ah, interesting. We have, um, that's related to the definition of function. So we're gonna figure out what the definition is here in a minute. But yeah, I'll put that over here. Vertical line test, right? Vertical line test. I like it. It's become a thing. Okay. Anything else you guys remember about functions? That's pretty good right there. It's just trying to be an L. All right. So a relation it, it is just any connection between numbers. There doesn't have to be any specific way that they go together. So if I just start, so here's a relation. Uh, two goes to seven, three goes to five, four goes to six and three. That's a relation between numbers. Two goes to seven, right? Three goes to five. Okay, so this is the idea of inputs and outputs. So a relation is any connection between uh, two groups of numbers. Now to be a function, it, it takes a special kind of thing. This is not a function right here. This is not a function. Why is this not a function? Does anybody, does anybody know why that does not represent a function? There's a very specific reason. Because the input gets two output. Yes, there's an input that has more than one output. I love it. I like it. All right. So let me see if I can bring in our movie discussion with our math discussion. Has anyone ever seen the movie or even seen any of the series Highlander? Anybody ever heard of Highlander? Nobody? Not a single one of you? All right. It's okay. That's some old shit, Mr. Wallace, from forever ago. All right, whatever. 
So forget it. I'm not going to even reference it. Forget it. Um, so the definition of function is for every element of the domain. This sounds very technical, right? For every element of the domain, you can also say for every input. There can be only one. Uh, element in the range. Element in the range, you can also think of that as output. So for every input, there can be only one output if you want to get right to it and be less technical. So that's why that is not a function because there's an input that has more than one output. So if I said at two minutes, they were seven feet away, at three minutes, they were five feet away, and at four minutes, they were six and three feet away. I said, wait a minute, what? So a function sort of goes along with, it has to model reality, right? So if I say at a certain time and I, I throw a ball up in the air and I say five seconds later, where is it? And you say, uh, it's 20 feet up and it's also three feet below the ground. You're like, no, 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 no. What kind of ball is that? What the hell are you talking about? We can only have one output for a given time input. Are you guys at all with me a little bit now? All right, so everybody got this weird little dude? And by the way, this is the thing that comes from Highlander. There could be only one, but nobody knows it. That's fine. Okay. I'm going to erase this. So tell me this. Uh, is this a function uh, let's do one more like i just did domain range two goes to five four goes to five and six goes to seven is that a function yes okay i got one vote for yes any votes for no or any agreement with yes you could be wrong. Are you guys, are you guys out there? Yeah. So, it, all right. So, all right. I'll go ahead and say you got it right. This is a, this. Yes, this is a function. If anybody was concerned about this, yes, queen. No, just yeah. Okay. Yes. So two went to five and four went to five, but no inputs went to more than one output. So basically, if it's written like this with the arrows, you look for if one number has two arrows coming off of it, right? That's a telltale sign. It's not a function. Okay, easy. What if I give it to you like this? Is this a function? Uh, no. No. Somebody else tell me why not. Three houses. Right, here we go. Somebody else. <laughs> Sorry, man. You're getting all the answers. I want to spread it out. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an equal opportunity questioner. Three is both negative one and two. Yeah, yeah. Three goes to more than one thing. So the input three has more than one output. So this is not a function. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So just so you know, these are the kind of problems I like to give you on like a quiz or something, right? So let's try another type. Let's try one that's visual. These are both kind of uh, tabular, right? So let me give you a visual. Is this a function?
Is that a function? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Hedging your bets. I love it. You're like a Wall Street. You're like a hedge fund, hedge fund manager. Like, is there an input that has more than one output? Does this input, how many outputs does this input have? One. one, right? Is there an input that has more than one output? Yes. Um, yeah, like right here, right? This input has one, two, three outputs. Let me stop for a minute. Does anyone not get that? And of course, that leads to what that was in our list. This leads to the idea of the vertical line test. If a vertical line goes through more than once, that is not a function. Because that would mean that that x value that corresponds to has more than one place it goes to. How are you guys doing? So if this was a ball over time, if this was the height of the ball over time, it means that this time that ball was here, here, and there. That's a magic freaking ball, right? No? You guys are right? Okay. You look tired. I know. It's the end of the first week. Left side is a function. What do you mean? No, all it takes is one place for this thing to screw up and it's not a function, not a function. Now, a good question would be, so for example, a really simple example of something that's not a function would be a sideways parabola, right? That's, that's obviously not a function. But what if I restricted and I said, no, I, I, let, me, let me cut this part off. If I could cut this part off, is that a function now? Yes. And that would be the square root function, right? This piece would be the negative part of that. All right, so you can do things like restrict the range, restrict the domain. So if you could cut it like right here, cut it and say only between there, then it would be a function. Yes. But this is the, this is what they've given me. This is not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. Okay. I like it. Okay. So those are three different formats. You could get a question. Is this a function? I can give you a domain and range table kind of thing. I can give you a set of points, or I can give you the actual graph. Okay. Oh, let me do one more. Watch this. Is this a function? Uh, let's see. Is that a function? Yes. Yes, because there's no input. So an input of uh, negative one has an output of what? Zero. Zero. An input of zero has an output of two and so forth. You guys with me? No input has more than one output. So this is a function check. I like it. Okay, I like it. So let's get, let's, um, this is what I was thinking maybe somebody would say when I said function. Um, is this, what's function notation look like? What's function notation look like? Anybody? No? So I'll start with Rocket. How do you say this? How do you read this? F of X. F of X. F of X. I love it. And we know this inherently. Can somebody read this for me? What does that say? Square root of seven. Of seven. 
So what's the function? It's the square root function. What's the input? Seven. So it's a function of the input. It's square root of seven. Freaky shit. All right, I like it. Now, what if I give you this? And I ask you, what is f of four? Take a minute and do that. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. You can ask a question. Don't tell me an answer yet. Everybody try to do that. This should be pretty simple, right? This is uh, just the idea of substitution, right? So who's got the answer? 14. 14, I love it, because you'll get four squared minus square root of four, 16 minus two, 14, kick ass. All right, let's crank this up a little bit. What is F of, um, yeah, let's do, what's F of W? But some of you guys are gonna be like, how the shit would I know, <laughs> right? Another one, what do you mean another one? <laughs> I love how, I love how you are all completely cool with this, aren't you? Isn't this f of letter equals letter squared minus square root of letter? Isn't that what that says? So what the hell is f of w? If f of x is x squared minus square root of x, what's f of w? W squared minus square root of w. Yeah. Is there anything special about the letter x? Not really. It's just special just because we picked it. It's got a very strange history, but it could have been any letter. So if f of x is this, what do I do? What did, how did you get 16 here? Because what did you do with the four? Didn't you plug it in? You plug it in? So whatever the shit is in here, you plug it in. And now, can I do anything with this? No. So it's actually kind of better than a number because I can't do anything. All right, now, love you guys, I love you guys, here we go. What about, what is F of A to the fourth power? So what do you guys get? So all I do the sixth power. Uh, all I do is I plug that in. Wherever I see an X, I'm going to replace it with a four. Try this one again. A eight. A squared. All right, so all function notation kind of leads us to is substitution. Whatever you put here, you put there, and you put wherever X is, right? I like it. All right, so try this one. Same function. What is F of uh, Y plus H?
So in place of X, I always get somebody, somebody tries to tell me this is not the right answer. I always get somebody tells me, tries to say this is the answer. Oops, let me put a Y there. Used to. No, that's, that's crap. That's crap. What are you putting in place of X? Y plus H. Y plus H. And then this guy, you can simplify. And that's all you can do. Is that all right? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna assume that's okay. All right. Not that big of a deal. It isn't. It's just so single-minded. It's whatever the hell's here goes in place of the X. That's it. And then you simplify, you can. Okay. By the way, um, what 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 did this kind of replace? What would normally be sitting here? What did this kind of replace? Why? 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 So y is a function of x. If I write y equals x squared minus square root of x, then y is a function of x. This means that to get y, I do shit to x. Right, so function is basically do shit to, if you want to get technical. I like it. So, can somebody tell me, uh, what do you got, Jeff? You can do it, buddy. What is that? Can somebody use the word function of, the phrase function of? What is a function of what in this? What are my things that can change? What are my variables up there? No. A and R. A and R. Which one is a function of the other one? A is a function of R. Yes, A is a function of R. How do you get A? You do stuff to R. A is stuff done to R. Can I solve this? Uh, this is a little bit weird because this is, uh, let's see if you guys can handle this. In general, the answer to this next question would be no. But could I actually solve this for R? Could I get, could I get R as a function of A? Yeah. So to do, to do that, you have to solve for R. What is it about? what these things represent that allows me to do this. What do you have to do when you start to solve for R? To solve this for R, what do you get? You have to, what do you have to do first? Divide the pi. And then of course I have to take square root. And normally what would I have to do when I take a square root? No? Okay. So in the homework, there was a problem like this. Something, I think it was that. I can't remember exactly. Plus and minus? Yeah. Some people got it wrong because they gave me just one answer. But when you take a square root, you got to put plus or minus to represent the two possible roots, right? Why don't I have to do that here? What is it about this being a specific physical situation that tells me I don't put plus or minus here. Because of the length is always positive. The radius can't be negative. I like it. The length is always positive. So in this case, I don't need to put the plus or minus. So can I get it to be a function of, can R be a function of A? Yes, in this specific case, because they actually represented uh, physical measurements. Yeah, like maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. These are all related to things you're going to have to do in the homework, by the way. Okay. 
So there's a really cool homework problem somebody asked me about. Oh, by the way, before I get too far away, a little side note, because the square root stuff keeps coming up. What is the square root of x squared? X, right? Nope. Plus or minus x. Nope. Because I have out of ideas. X. So, say again? X. No. So watch this. I really want you guys. No, 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 definitely not. If you thought the square root of x squared was x, couldn't x, uh -huh. no, couldn't x be negative two? Isn't that a value negative x could be? Right? Couldn't x be this? So what's the square root of negative two squared? What's negative two squared? Two. two. Okay, I'm with you. Four, square root of four is two. So is that equal to what X was? No. No. So you're going to get it here in a minute. The output for a square root always has to be positive. What function do we have that makes the output positive? No matter what. What function always makes things positive? You square value? Absolute value. I like. It. Is that cool? The person that said plus or minus, do you see why you're not quite right? Because the answer to this should not be two different things. It is one thing. All right. And by the way, I mean, we're talking about real numbers here at the moment. Okay. You guys, okay. So that was a little side note because we had a square root problem a second ago. I just want you guys to realize that is the reality. Now watch, this, this came up the other day too, and we were talking about uh, complex numbers. What is this? This is X all day long. You see how the two is outside there, but it's inside there? Maybe, maybe. All right, so it does make a difference, believe it or not. Okay, so that's a little side note. Uh, let me see, where was I going to go next? I had something in mind and then I went there. Shoot. All right, let me, let me tell you this. Uh, say that P equals F of Y uh, gives the population P of a certain town Y years after 2000, what does, holy shit, what does uh, F of, um, you can do it buddy, seven equals uh, 98,000. Represent. So don't say anything yet, hold on. Say that that function, P is a function of Y, gives the population P of a certain town, Y years after 2000. So what would F of seven equals 98,000 mean? What does that mean? What's the seven mean? What's the seven tell me? You guys pass by, pass from 2000. Say, say again, sir. The years after 2000. Sure, now let's put it all together and just tell me one answer. What's, yeah, there we go. That means that I'm in the year 2007. You can do it, Jeff. In 2007, there were, what's the rest of it mean? 98,000 people. Yeah, 98,000 people. Okay, I like it, right? Not that big of a deal. So you just gotta pay attention to what the variables in a given problem represent. So uh, if you don't, you're not able to describe what you find and you're not able to plug numbers into the right place, right? People start plugging values into all the variables and just praying 
to whatever God they want to believe in, right? And that's not, gonna, that's not a good way to do mathematics. Okay, maybe. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, there's, let's see. I don't want to say this. So a, to be a function, to be a function, you have to pass the vertical line test, which means uh, for every input, there's only one output. So this is a function, right? Y equals X squared would be a function. Um, there's a certain type of function called a one-to-one -one function. Okay. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Anybody remember hearing about one-to-one -one functions? Yes. It sounds like heart to heart or something. So here's why the name makes complete sense. For, for this, this is not a one-to-one -one function because if I give you a value of x, so let's say this is y equals x squared. If I give you a value of x, two, you can tell me the output, correct? Of course. But, so that's one way. Does it work the other way? If I give you a value of y, can you always tell me the value of x it came from? So what if I said, all right, where did y equals 9 come from? Can you tell me exactly where that came from? You guys follow me? The output of 9, where did it come from? See, I mean, you don't know. Do you know which one it was? Do you know if it was 3 or negative 3? Do you know? Do you know exactly where it came from? No, you don't. Right, so it's not one to one. It doesn't go both ways. So one to one, so X equals, who knows? It could be plus three, or it could be minus three. We don't know. So one to one functions means not only would I plug something in and I get one answer out, but I could work backwards. It's sort of like I could be a detective Given the result, I could work back to what the original was. I can't do that with a parabola, especially not my poorly drawn one, poor little dude. So a one-to-one -one function, what has to be true about a one-to-one -one function? And in, in a function, vertical lines go through once. In a one-to-one -one function, I want the other way to also work. I want every output to have only one input. I really want you guys. So to be one-to-one, -one, uh, not only does it have to be a function, so every X has only one Y, I also need every Y to have only one X, one-to-one. -one. I love you guys. So could this be a function right here? If I, if I give you two, four, negative two, four, three, nine. Could that be a function? Is that a function? Is that a function? Yes. Yes, because no input goes to more than one output. But is it a one-to-one -one function? No, because there's an output that goes back to more than one input. That's what it means. One-to-one -one means it has to work both ways. So visually, one to one has to pass the horizontal line test. So to be a function, you got to pass the vertical line test, the VLT, the volt. To be a one to one function, you have to pass the horizontal line test, the Holt, right? So if you pass both of them, you're like uber special. You're a one to one function. 
We're going to learn later this chapter that that means if it's a one-to-one -one function, that means an inverse function exists. I can find an opposite function. Okay. By the way, there was a question I didn't get to, uh, I think it was yesterday, somebody asked in chat how to do a piecewise function. The reason I didn't get to it, I should have said this, but we're doing that today. We're doing that like in a couple minutes, we're gonna do it. Graph piecewise function. Um, before I do that, I wanna do this. I wanna come back to domain and range. And I didn't really make this connection very good, but what letter does domain normally go with? X. And normally this is X. So normally this is Y. Y normally, because I don't have to have Y equals a function of X. I could have volume equal a function of radius or something. In which case, in the domain is R's and range is V's. So domain is inputs, range is outputs. So can somebody tell me, given this, what's the domain and what's the range? So domain is a collection of all the inputs. Range is a collection of all the outputs. So what's the domain for this problem? Somebody I haven't heard from yet. Anybody out there hasn't spoken isn't up? To... Say again, sorry. Isn't it one, neg... isn't it the domains are one, negative two, three, and six? Yeah, that's all. The domain is just a collection of all the inputs. One, negative two, three, six. And you put little brackets on them, right? And who's got the range? Somebody else, tell me what the range is. Now's your time to shine. Five, four. And negative one. Yes, there you go. Don't tell, you don't have to tell me five twice, right? Okay, it's like, who's going? Well, Bob's going, and Sam, and Bob's going, and Billy, and Bob's going. It's like, you already said Bob, holy shit. So you only have to say them once, even if they show up more than once. I like it. Hey, Mike. Okay, so I'm going to erase all this again. <laughs> I should have bought the larger, oh, well, too bad, Jim. I should have bought the big ass whiteboard, but too bad. So let me ask you this. Let me try to make a decent graph here. Very specific here. All right. Oh, let me stand here so I can get things lined up. Wouldn't that be neat? All right, so can somebody tell me the domain and the range? All right. So this is neat. Domain is a collection of all the inputs. What does that really mean? Like. Like, is four an input? No, because it doesn't have an output, right? Um, I understand why you say that, Sarah, but that's not quite right, because I connected the dots, right? It, is that an output? Is there an output right there? 
Yes, so that means if there must be an input that had that output. Is there an output right there? Oh yeah, is there an output right there? Yeah, is there right there? Yeah, yeah. So domain are all the inputs that actually have outputs. Oh, you're fine, Sarah. <laughs> Uh, so George's not quite right. So what do I need to answer this? Can you list all the numbers on the number line that have outputs? Can you? Stop it, George. Doesn't, does this one have an output? Yes. Does the one that's right next to that one have an output? Yes. Does the one that's right next to that one have an output? Yeah. How many inputs are there then? Use bracket with the minus three to three. Yes. So why can't you say all real numbers? Because does negative four is negative four have an output? No. So don't say all real numbers because negative four doesn't work. Right. So what's the lowest input that has an output? Negative three. So watch what you can do. All right. See this little dude? Hey, how are you doing? If you walk him. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually happening, everybody. If you walk him along the x-axis and he's looking up and down, what's the first time he sees the graph? At negative three, right? And when does he lose sight of the graph? What's the last time he sees the graph? At three, that's the last time he sees it. Do, do you guys follow me at all? Okay. Now do the same thing for the range. Little dude's walking. What's the first sign he sees the, the graph? Negative four. Negative four. I like it. And then two. And then? I love that I'm actually walking the dude. What is it? When's the last time he sees it? Two. 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 All right. Okay. I like it. What would have had to have happened to make this a parenthesis on the two? What would have made that a parenthesis? It doesn't include the. That's what that means. What would have happened on the graph? Use the circle. Oh, is that trying to be? Yeah, that's a three there would have been an open circle. So, okay, does so everybody get this one? Does everybody get this one? Do you guys get the idea? It's a pretty simple idea. Domain is related to X values. So of course you look on the X axis. What inputs have outputs? And then range is what outputs come from those inputs. So why do I have to use an interval? Because now it's, it's every number between two numbers. So I've got to use an interval. There's no way in hell you're going to list them all. That would take the rest of your life. How many numbers are there between negative three and three? How many numbers are between negative three and three? A shitload. That's right. Let's not be so technical, though. An infinite number, right? How many numbers are between zero and one? Infinite. The same amount an infinite number. How many are between zero and 0. 0.00001? An infinite number of numbers. So what I'm, why I'm saying that right now is the person that said all real numbers, your brain said there's a shitload of numbers. That must mean all real numbers. No, there's a shitload of numbers. In any interval on this line, there's an infinite number of numbers, right? Let that one keep you up awake at night or not. Maybe it's just me. Okay. Now, I'm going to change this a little bit. So I have no idea how you want to do this on your notes. So good luck. Um, I'm going to do exactly what I just said. There. Okay. Now think about what that means, what that does. Does it change the domain? Negative three has an output. Everything has an output, except for what between there? It's not gonna be this anymore. Why? 
Because the two is not included anymore. Two does not have an output. So I got to say negative three up to two. Eep. Or Eep. two up to three. So I think I said yesterday, I always look at this as meaning skip. Negative three to three, skip two. I have to skip two because there's no freaking output at two. And what's the range now? Range is not going to be quite as ugly. All I have to do in the range is negative four to two, but don't include the two, right? So be careful about open circles. You got to be careful about how they affect the range and the domain. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. So, any questions about finding domain and range from a given graph? It's not that bad. It's not that difficult. Okay. All right. All right. So the last thing we'll do. Yeah. Maybe we'll get out a little, little early today. Why not? Uh, we're going to do some, or maybe not go we'll find out because we're about to try to do some piecewise functions. And for some reason, people really kind of fall apart on these piecewise functions. I, I want you guys, you guys are not going to do that. You guys are going to totally get this. All right or I'm deranged. It's one of those two things. So I want to first, I want you to first graph. We're going to start with a, with a, not a piecewise. I just want you to take a minute and graph this function for me. Uh, sure. Now listen to me. I, I want you to, do you, have you guys noticed how I graph uh, and I'm not a really good uh, artist at all? Like the word artist should not even come anywhere near my name in a sentence. Do you guys agree with me? You should. It's okay. I'm allowing you to agree with me. Okay. If I was in my class, I would force me to get some freaking graph paper. I would say, Mr. Waller, if you do not get graph paper, I will not accept any of your freaking homework. Holy shit. So if any of you have the same issues I do or anywhere near, get some freaking graph paper. When you make a graph, this is shit. That is pure shit. That is pure shit. I need details. I need scale. I need work. Are you guys understanding? In fact, let me... Go ahead and say this. I haven't said this yet. And I don't say this to scare you, right? Just stay with me. I'm not saying this to scare you, but pre-calculus is graphing hell, right? We are gonna graph the hell out of everything. We're gonna analyze graphs. We're gonna shift graphs. We're gonna learn functions and then immediately learn how to graph those damn things. Why do we do that? So that when you get to calculus, you can make graphs pretty quickly because you're going to have to do a lot of extra shit once you get the graph made. Does that make sense? So that's one big reason why we have pre-calculus is to just, it's like a graphing boot camp. All right, maybe. So we'll find out if I've scared anybody away. I'm sorry. It doesn't change what we're going to do. It just... Let you know a little bit better. All right. So if you're going to graph this, you can make an XY table if you need to, right? Um, but you should be able to do it as you go. All right. So like zero, where would that go? There you go, Jeff. No. Negative four. Good. All right. Zero, negative four. I love it. And you can label. And then uh, one and negative one, they both have the same output, right? What happens when you put a one or a negative one in there? What do you get? Negative three. So at one, it goes to negative three. And at negative one, it goes to negative three. I like it. It's all right, Jeff. All right. 
And then let's do one more. At two and negative two, I get something nice. What do I get? Two and negative two. Uh, zero. Here. So then I get exactly what we expected, right? Not bad. So if you gave me that, I have to be happy because that's what I just gave you. I've got a scale, I've got work, I've got graph, I love it, right? Okay, I like it, I like it, I like it. Now, let's step into piecewise. What the shit <laughs> is piecewise? I have a class. Did I tell you that I have a class where somebody's upset at me for cussing? I think I did. That's right. This morning was kind of funny. Uh, I've just basically given up. I can't stop. So I'm just going to see if she stays with me or not. Um, so I'm going to erase this. This is, uh, who cares? Right? This is no big deal. I'm going to erase this. A piecewise function is defined in pieces holy shit um and it looks like this uh, let's make this not too crazy jeff sure uh yeah let's do x squared uh oh let's just do this uh okay why did i make that so big, I've got, <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right, copy that down. I'm gonna put it up here in the corner so I actually have room to do a graph. All right. Same problem, I'm just recopying up here, okay? I mean, take the other semicolons, let me not freak you guys out. So the way to read this, is it's defined by domain elements. So if I'm trying to plug a number in that is one or less, I use this definition. If I'm trying to plug a number in that's greater than one, I use this. So can somebody tell me, don't do any tables, don't do anything. Can somebody just tell me what f of five is? Nine. If Yes, if somebody told you F of five is 25, what would you say to them? Do you see where it came from? But this might be you. Did you think the answer was supposed to be 25? Why is the answer not 25? Because the input I'm using is not less than or equal to one. Is everybody, it's, it's not that crazy. Okay, so what is the real life application of these? So you have a rocket going and then a meteorite hits it. Is it going the same trajectory now? No, at some time, like at one hour, a rocket, uh, my a meteorite hit my rocket and now it's going at a different trajectory. You guys, does that make sense? You guys with me? That's a, that's a real life physical application of piecewise functions. And the word trajectory makes me sound drunk. It's the word trajectory. All right, it's nothing else. Okay. Um, so one of the most careful ways you can create this is to make a table of values. If I have inputs that are at most one, so I would use one, zero, negative one. Is that cool? Everybody see where I'm getting those? If I wanna use this guy, my inputs have to be at most one. So now I can just put a one squared is one, zero, one. Is that cool? No, are you guys all right? <laughs> Every time I say something, it's the same expression, so I have no idea. Okay. What we sipping on tonight, you're not gonna, it's for me to know. Ah. And then X greater than one. I'm still not giving myself much room, am I? Let me move this over a little bit. I got room for a graph x greater than one. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. What's the first input I could use? 
One? Uh, uh, no, I cannot use one, but I am going to. It's The answer is not two, is it? What about 1.01? Right? What about 1.0000000001? Could I use that? Can I use, you want me to say it again? <laughs> Could I use 1.800? Yes, because it's greater than one. Are you guys understanding why it's not two? So what do I do then? What do I do then? I am going to put a one in. But I put a little parenthesis around it because I'm not technically allowed to use one, but I can get as close to one as I want to. Does that make any sense? What is the next number right after one? Can somebody tell me? I didn't say next whole number. I said next number. 0 0.999. No, no, no. That's before one. What's the next number after one? One point infinite zeros one. Do you want to write that here? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Now just let me do this shit, this weird shit. I'm not allowed to use one. So I'm going to put it in parentheses to remind myself something in a minute. What do I get when I put a one in? I kind of wanted to make this different. That's too bad, Jeff. It's too late. What do I get when I put a one in? One. One. What about when I put a two in? Three. 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 And then three, five, and then four, seven. Okay, that's easy. Now watch, how do I graph this? Let me let me graph this a little bit different than I normally would. Uh, let's see, how far do I want to go? My scale's not the best, but that's too bad. All right. Let's just go up to five. All right. So one, 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 one. Oh, let me actually, I wanted to start the other way. Let's start with these. Now, now, so three, five, three, five, two, three, two, three. At one, 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 I'm going to put an open circle. And I really want you guys to understand why. Because when I connect these, what does this represent? This is me getting closer and closer and closer to one. If I put 1.00001 in here, that would be like uh, 1.00002 would be the answer. I don't know if you guys are really with me. So the, the, the point that represents the place you're not allowed to use, in this case, greater than one, so I can't use one. I still use it just to see where the open circle is going to go. Now, now. All right. And by the way, this is kind of like my notation. I don't, this isn't like official notation, but it just makes the most sense to me. Is I put in parentheses the point that I'm not really allowed to use. So that's where the open circle goes. Now look what happens here though when I start to graph this one. This that fills the circle in, doesn't it? One one, it fills it in. Will that always happen? No. But I went one one zero zero negative one one, and I have to know that this is parabolic, so it's curved. Don't be giving me no straight lines through that. You know what x squared looks like, right? So you have to know the look of your functions. So this was. One function graphed up to one, and then the other function graphed after that. That's all a piecewise function is. That's it. That is it. Maybe. Could there be more than two pieces? Oh, hell yeah. There could be infinite pieces, right? Don't worry. We're not going to do infinite pieces. Don't worry. What time is it? Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. What do you guys say? Is that good? Is that all right? So we officially made it. Let me make sure where we, we just ended up. I think we, yeah, we're in 3-2. Piecewise functions are in section 3-2. Yes? Okay, Dorth. All right. So let me know if you guys have questions, if you want to hang out for a bit. Otherwise, 
you're free to go. You have survived your first week of free calculus, and I don't even have a t-shirt for you. Sorry. Get your own damn shirt. If you want to have questions, let me know, or else I'm going to head out. Is it better now, Amanda? We'll do some more examples tomorrow. Um, not tomorrow, <laughs> Monday. But uh, just to make sure you understand if the polls don't line up, uh, just to make sure you understand what happens there. All right. I'm not seeing any questions. I'm going to head out. I have a question. Oh, yes. Um, I don't know if it's related too much to class, but if I wanted to write uh, 0, 0.0 repeating like infinitely one, how would I write that? That is uh, like a, a classic question. And to be honest, there are different answers based on, um, how do I say this? What type of math you're using, believe it or not, there are more sets of numbers than you realize. Um, so in one respect, that is something you start to study in calculus. And we might talk a little bit about it in this class, but they're called um, infinite decimals. It was the word, uh, who was it now? Was it Newton or Leibniz? I forget which one was the one that liked those and which one hated those. But they're like um, the smallest positive number. It, it, that's a weird idea, right? Uh, I, and I love the idea because it's kind of the inverse of the biggest positive number, which has a symbol infinity. Now, now here I can tell you this. Uh, let me see if I can remember. Holy shit, Jeff. It's called iota. Iota is an actual, you know, it's a Greek letter. Uh, how do I make the Greek letter? It's been so long since I've drawn iota. Uh, I can't believe I've forgotten how to draw iota. That really disturbs me. Um, let's see, images. Oh, come on. I'm getting, all right, screw you guys. All right, screw. It's the, it's the Greek letter iota. I should look up Greek letters. And, and this kind of represents the idea of the smallest positive number. Um, how often is that brought up in mathematics? Not very. Uh, it's also called infinitesimals. They represent the smallest possible movement in a graph, like doing a slope. You want to move the smallest possible amount over. Uh, and we call that infinitesimal, which is basically your point zero forever one, right? Does that any of this make sense? So it's really just giving a name to that idea. And there's a few different names based on kind of what mathematics you're using right and there's actually some people hate the idea of infinitesimals and some people hate the idea of iota and so i mean iota is more like a probability thing infinitesimals is a calculus thing do you see what i mean so it sort of depends on which gang you're in there's math gangs right so uh yeah i have no idea if that helped out but um yeah you can look up iota smallest let me see if they even I'm curious now. Yeah, there you go. The smallest unit is the iota. Uh, do they give me the symbol? No. Holy shit. And now this I never knew. There's a kilo iota and there's a mega iota. This is hilarious. Oh, it's like, oh, no way. All right, I'm sorry. So this is related to Bitcoin. I had no idea. IOTA coins. That is crazy. So it's been taken over by, Bit, by, uh, by you know, um, what's the general name for Bitcoin? That's a more specific name. Um, crypto, crypto coin, right? Crypto. Um, anyway, anyway, that's more than you wanted. Yeah, I'm, I'm just working on a, a concept for uh, fourth dimensional time intervals. And I uh, just, I needed some way to represent that. And I, I didn't oh. know how to do it. You can do this. DT means the smallest possible change in time. 
which is basically the 0.0001 ideas. It's what's an infinitesimal, it's, it's in calculus. Once you start taking calculus, Alex, you're gonna be blown away. I, uh, I remember the first time I took calculus, I was like, how did I do anything before I knew calculus? It's, it's insane. Um, and once you start working with these guys, your world's gonna open up, it's gonna be crazy. Um, yeah, so you can research infinitesimal, I think is more along the lines of what you're working on. Infinitesimal, research those. Yeah, Google should start spelling it for you. Once It's like the word infinite and then S-I-M-A-L, infinitesimal. And if you put in the plural, infin infinitesimals, there'll probably be more results based on what you want to look at. Yeah, but like I said, once you start studying calculus, you'll have a better foundation to build this on, I think what you're trying to do. Okay, awesome, Thank, thanks for that. Sure, and Amanda, I think you're right. I think it's, I don't know if you're still here. No, she's not. How's everybody else, you guys? Okay, I'm gonna head out if I don't see any questions, maybe. I have a question yeah. uh, for section 3.2 of the homework. All right. Uh, let me see, hold on. Uh, oh shit. Jeff, three, two, all right, which one? Uh, questions 33 and 36. So let's see what's it's asking. It's asking you domain or range, okay, 33. So why is 33 giving you trouble? Let me see here. This guy here, right? Yes, that one and definitely 36, yes. See the arrow, see the arrow? So where does it start then? Where would you start on the x-axis? See, the arrow says it keeps going forever. So what's the lowest input that has an output if this keeps going forever? On the x-axis? Yep, because that's for domain, right? Domain is x's. Yes. So which x, so negative two has an output, negative four has an output, negative six has an output because it keeps going. Uh huh. So what's the smallest? X that has an output. Infinite? Yes, negative infinity. It keeps okay. going forever. So it's from negative infinity up to, what's the last input that has an output? To one. One, there you go. Okay. So when you're looking at it, you would start from like going towards like the left side going in? Yeah, you start over here. Mm -hmm. The arrow goes, just says, I keep going, then you know it's going to start at negative infinity. Mm -hmm. Right, because the, yeah, okay. And then the range is just looking at the y-axis. So where does it start? Where's the first output I see? So I don't see anything yet, right? Mm -hmm. So I start seeing stuff here, right? So, so that would be zero. Zero, and then do you see how this keeps going up, so? And that'd be uh, infinity, right, infinite. Exactly, yeah, there you go. So then for like number 36, <laughs> How would you start on that one then? Because I, I just looked at it and I was like, oh my goodness. Do you see one side, it stops and the other side, it goes forever? Yes. Okay, so the domain is gonna be, all right, so I think, do they say approximate or something? No, but they're gonna have to approximate because they gave you some gross. See how this isn't really uh, negative two, it's like negative two point something. Yes, okay. Just approximate. And what's gonna what symbol are you gonna put on the negative two point whatever? Because of the open circle. Uh parentheses. Yeah. And then what's the last input as an output? Well, this goes forever. So do you see how it goes forever and it's and it's angled? So it will eventually that will eventually be over the whole x-axis over here, right? Mm -hmm. So that'd so that be infinite. Infinity, yeah. Okay. Now the range is a little bit easier. The range, um, what's the lowest the range gets? Is it negative four? Negative four. Okay. And then I know this side stops, but this side keeps going. So there's still outputs past 10, right? There's still outputs past 10 because that keeps going. So it'd be, so it'd be like bracket negative four 
uh, and then comma infinity. Yes. Ah, okay. And so then, but for the first one, it would be parentheses negative two point two or something. Negative two point something comma infinity. Infinity, exactly. Ah, okay. Big ass. And infinity and is always parentheses because you can't get to infinity, so you don't want to include it. Okay, it actually really helped when you did the walking man because I was like, <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm using it for the other one. So that makes sense. People are going to think that. I mean, it sounds so like kindergartnerish, but it's a cool idea. You can actually see the little dude walking, and it's all about where does he first see? He's like, oh, this is boring. It's, oh, I see some shit. Oh, wow. And that's that's the domain and the range, depending on which axis you're walking. I like it. Awesome. Okay, I get it now. Thank you so much. Thank you're you. Welcome. Charles, are you out there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just listening to questions. Okay, okay. All right. I'm going to head out then. Have a good weekend.